Let's look at deals in Follow Up Boss and some of the recent changes as well. So I'm here in Deals in the top menu. Some of these things will be accessible only to owners and admins, and some will be accessible to agents. So I'll do my best to cover which are which. So you've got what uh, Follow Up Boss calls pipelines up here. So these can be just differentiated things like buyers and sellers. If you're sending outbound referrals, it can be a good way to track outbound referrals. I've seen people use these to track ISA appointments. There's a number of things you can do here. Only the owner level account can edit these and you click on the gear to edit pipelines. You can have multiple pipelines. And then within those pipelines, you also have um, different stages that can pull across. So you can rename the stages that are here. You can add a stage. So if you wanna track appointments here, that's something you could do. Uh, moving them from appointment to under contract to pending to close. Now, only one of these stages can be considered closed. You can, you can determine which one that is, but this is for reporting purposes as far as closed deals. So when you go to deals reporting, this is where it's going to be, um, you can tell if the deal has closed or not, um, as well as seeing it here under closed deal. So it is important um, which one of these stages you've designated um, by checking this box is closed for reporting. You can also pick a different color scheme um, for a different order. So if it if uh, you know you need to have multiples, you might use a smart color scheme. And of course you want them, you can drag them to change the order, but you of course want them in some sort of flow that makes sense, probably from left to right. So let's get into an actual deal card itself. There's a lot of cool things you can do here, some of which have been recently added. Certainly using the property address is a good idea. If it is just a buyer consultation, you don't have a property address, you might consider using the buyer name here. So you can see here when it was created inside the record, uh, you can set the price um, as well as a close date, a total commission. And then recently, Paul Boss has added agent and team splits. And you can do these as a percentage or as a dollar amount. So if you wanted to say, you know, hey, it's a 50% to agent, 50% to team, then... Uh, you can do that and it'll be automatically calculated for you. Now, this is not designed to really be able to hold all the various fees or an MLS fee or anything like that. So it still really is a great guideline, but it's not something you could use even as closely as like a brokerage back end uh, to actually calculate. It's truly more of a pipeline type of like, hey, we've got X volume closing in the next 30 days and approximately this much money to the team and this much money to the agent. Um, you can add people here. Now, typically the people here are gonna be people just in follow-up boss. So this would be the client, here's a person, and then team would be a team member or a user. One cool thing I've seen people do is you can also put an ISA here. So if this was converted by an ISA, you can actually put, I'll use April as an example, you could put April here as the ISA doesn't necessarily give her responsibilities, but it just ties her to this contact. Um, you could add notes in a description. There are now deal custom fields, which are also new, and you can create your own. So just like regular custom fields, you can determine a type um, and you can do read only, name them if you want it to be a drop dropdown. Um, you can do all that here now in deals. So hopping back to this example here. Um, you can add all those. You can even connect, uh, connect files. So if you wanted to keep uh, either some closing docs or a CD statement or some other type of statement connected to the deal, not the client specifically, but to this deal, you can do that here. Um, and this is just a Kanban style drag and drop. So as they go from under contract to pending, you can just drag them over. And that is all you need to do. When they do close, you do not want to archive these because if you archive them, they come out of the client record. So you may, um, you probably don't want to archive them because you want to be able to go to this client. Well, actually, this doesn't have a person attached to it. Let's see. 
Let's attach it to this guy because we can. So now when we go to this client record, we're going to also see this deal over here. So we can go, oh, right, this guy closed with us last year or whatever that is. And then similarly, you can click here to go right back to the deal and see any of the details, who was the agent, what happened. So pretty great tool for that. Uh, but if you archive it, it will not show here. So you typically are probably not going to want to archive these. The way you do that is under deals or the way you would use this to see certain time frames under deals. You can um, now change the time frame on these. So you could say, hey, last 30 days um, or next 30 days if you're looking to the future pipeline. Um, so you can do all of those changes here within the actual deals reporting. But under deals, you would typically just leave people here on the closed. I've seen a few people that will do this as like 2021 close or 2022 close. So if that floats your boat, you can do that as well. There's also some newer things up here where you can um, you can hop through to if you want to view deals by a certain person. So back to my ISA example, if April was the ISA here and I wanted to see how many deals she had set that became pending, I could drop down to April as the user, as an admin level, and go, oh, look, two of the deals that April was the ISA on are pending. So, hey, that's great news. You know, we now can see this. There's also another great feature on the leaderboard now. There's deals reporting. So a lot of us are used to the activity leaderboard, which shows who's done what as far as contacting leads. But now there's a deals leaderboard that's also going to show, uh, and my timing is, is off here on the dates, but... Um, this is going to show a little more intel on the deals and who is attached to them versus just the actual agent activity leaderboard. So again, this is just a drop down on leaderboard. You could just toggle between activity and deals. So some pretty cool stuff here. Uh, just wanted to cover that at a high level. But again, having these different pipelines along with uh, whatever stages you choose to use, making sure one of them is labeled closed. And then just using the system to tie certain people to these, um, both team members and clients, and then starting to use the split feature just to give you a little more intel around upcoming pipeline um, revenue and volume. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, drop us a comment and we'll be happy to answer them.